Hello and welcome to the open day video for the MPhil in Medieval Studies. I'm Mark Faulkner, I'm Usher Assistant Professor in Medieval Literature in the School of English and the Programme Director. I also convene the Language and Literature Strand and in this video you'll also meet my two colleagues, Ruth Karras, who convenes the Culture and Civilization Strand, and Simon Egan, who convenes the History Strand. The video comprises three main parts. In a moment, I'll introduce you to a video that we made about the program prior to its launch two years ago. After that, my colleague Ruth Karras will talk about some of the ways in which the program has developed over the last two years, thanks to some new staff hires and about some of the exciting projects that students on the program have undertaken. And then my colleague Simon Egan will tell you what you can look forward to studying on the core modules on the MPhil and some of the option modules that we've offered over the past two years and which will, may well be available this year too. So without any more ado, here is that promotional video for the MPhil in Medieval Studies. I'm Ruth Karras and I'm the lucky professor of medieval history here at Trinity. And I just wanted to add a couple of footnotes to the video that you've seen. First of all, Obviously, the video was recorded at a time when we were doing all our teaching in person, and we hope that by the fall of 2021, we'll be back to doing all our teaching in person in much the same way. However, during academic year 2020-21, as with uh, many universities across the world, we did do it online, and we've learned a lot of things about how to do that. So if we do end up being all or partially online in the fall of 2021, we will still be able to offer you the same classes that we would be offering uh, in person. Of course, you don't have access to manuscripts in the same way as you would when you were studying online, but the Trinity Library has been in the process of digitizing as many of its manuscript holdings as it possibly can. So while it is not entirely the same as being able to see a manuscript in person, it is still a pretty darn good alternative, as you'll see with some of the dissertations that I'm going to show you in a minute. In the video, my colleague Imo Varnch has mentioned that the program focuses especially in Irish history. And that is no longer as true as it was. Trinity does, of course, as you would expect, have a particular strength in Irish studies, both medieval Irish history and uh, Irish language and literature. However, uh, in part due to some new appointments over the last few years, uh, we've built strength in the history of Britain, uh, both in comparison with Ireland and on its own, in late antiquity and Byzantine studies, in gender studies across Europe and from a comparative perspective, in Jewish studies and also in the Islamic world. And next year, we're going to be offering a module as well uh, on medieval science. I just wanted to show you the dissertation topics that the students from 2019-2020 uh, completed, just to give you some idea. And these students were given an extra extension of four months on their dissertations uh, due to the pandemic. So these dissertations have just been uh, recently submitted. But just to give you some idea of the range of things, that our students have done. And these come from across the three strands, the history strand, the culture and civilization strand, which um, I'm currently the coordinator for, and the language and literature strand. Italian studies, and particularly Dante, is an area of strength for us. And here we have somebody who worked not on Dante, but on Boccaccio. Uh, and in studying a manuscript that we hold here in Trinity. It's not actually this manuscript. This is a different manuscript of the same text that I was able to find an image of. Insular art is another particular strength. 
and of course, Irish literature, as you would expect. Again, we've got Dante, Irish literature, insular early medieval literature, but also, and this is a student from the culture and civilization strand, um, medieval French literature, Old English, Geoffrey of Monmouth, a Latin author from 12th century England. Again, English history and the history of magic. The connection between theology and material culture and economics. Dante again. Sanctuary law in England with also some comparison to Italy. The Frankish Queen Brunhild. And again, early Irish literature. As you can see, uh, we are all over the map. The proposals that we're getting in now for students in the current year, again, Many of them uh, are dealing with medieval Ireland, but we have ones dealing with Germany and other uh, parts of Europe as well. And a whole range of topics. We cover a lot and we're very open to students doing what they want to do. There are some areas in which it's more possible to do manuscript work here in Trinity than other areas. But there are many, many different topics that are open to you if you come here to study with us. Hello, my name is Dr. Simon Egan, and I'm an assistant professor in medieval Irish and British history here at Trinity College Dublin. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about the different types of core modules, as well as the types of optional modules you can take in this, the MPhil in Medieval Studies. Let's look at the core modules first of all. During the course of your degree, you're required to take four of these. They are Sources for Medieval Studies 1, Sources for Medieval Studies 2, Introduction to Medieval Books and Documents, and Reading Medieval Books and Documents. OK, let's look at the Sources modules in more detail. Broadly speaking, the aims of this module are to introduce you to the different types of source material available for the Middle Ages, and to encourage you to think about how to analyze these, these sources in different ways. So this really equips you with the kind of the skills necessary to undertake your own independent research and begin formulating research questions, which are kind of the building blocks for writing, researching and writing your dissertation. Would also encourage you to explore the, some of the key manuscripts and manuscript collections held within Trinity College Dublin's library. Lots of different types of source material will be kind of on showcase in this course. They include the hagiography, which is medieval saints' lives, the corpus of Irish annals, old English poetry, charters, financial records, court records and legal material, genealogies, as well as the bardic poetry of later medieval Ireland. So there's quite a lot on offer here. <laughs> Moving on to medieval books and documents. This course builds upon the source module and it seeks by studying the study of paleography, that is medieval handwriting, you're introduced to the range of different scripts used during the Middle Ages. Students are provided with a really good grounding in the working practices of medieval scribes and readers, and you're given extensive practice in the recognition, transcription, and dating of medieval hands. Also, you're encouraged to reflect critically on the different editorial methods underlying primary texts. And for instance, how does a manuscript move from being a manuscript to a printed edition? These are all things you'll consider and learn about in this course. Again, this course draws heavily upon the university's manuscript collections. You look at manuscripts in their physical format, but the course also draws upon digitized material from different institutions across the world. You will um, do various dating exercises and essentially, you're going to trace the development of handwriting in early medieval Europe from, let's say, the aftermath of the decline of the Roman Empire through to the kind of 
um, high medieval period right down to the close of the Middle Ages in the late 15th, early 16th century. So moving from Caroline and minuscule hand through to Proto-Gothic and, and Textura, right down to the Anglicana and the Secretary hand more commonly associated with the later Middle Ages. You'll also learn about how texts are preserved. So archival practice um, will, will form another element in this course. Optional modules. One of the main strengths of this course is the range of expertise on offer here. In terms of languages, there's a huge variety to choose from. You can study Latin, the classical kind, as well as medieval form, Old Irish, Old French, Old Italian, as well as Old and Middle English. And there's a very broad range of thematic options available. You can take modules in the history of medieval sexuality and gender, as well as medieval maps. If you're interested in religion, you can study the history of monasticism in Ireland and Europe more generally, as well as the development of Christianity within what we would call the Celtic world, that being Ireland, Scotland and Wales. You can study Irish kingship, but you can also look at broader European trends as well, such as the history of the Plantagenet Empire, the origins of the Renaissance, European kingship, and you can study the writings of the Florentine writer Dante Alighieri and the very famous English author Geoffrey Chaucer. So there's a huge range available here. Thank you very much. So that brings us to the end of our open day video for the MPhil and Medieval Studies. If you do have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact either me as course director or the appropriate strand convener. I'm also very happy to give you advice about which strand might be the best fit for you. We hope you enjoyed hearing about the programme and we would be delighted to field any further questions you might have about it.